All right, getting into sampling, a little bit more about contact. Um, I hope this video is not too quiet. Um, so I found some samples that I really like. They sound like this. And notice that they, um, they're they not finishing before the next one triggers. Um, so here it goes. It's actually the exact opposite of what I said. They are finishing with some space before the next one triggers. Um, if we look at the way that I have it set up in contact, this is the arrow read sample. I have four different chords. One is there. On G1, C2, and G2. Um, and I like how they sound. I already have a drum loop that is working for me which is right here. And the starts of those keys sound fine. And almost they kind of blend in, but I can hear the congas in the background aren't quite on beat. Um, if I were to listen to my click track, it's definitely not really working. I could almost get away with it, but I'm not satisfied. So. I like the key. I don't want to pitch those samples up. So how could I stretch it or slow it down so that the sample stretches out a bit and um, smoothly transitions into the next? So here we go. If you look at the source, the source of the sample right now is DFD. DFD stands for direct from disk. That's the setting in which um, you have the, the root sample essentially at pitch as recorded. And if you go up, it's going to speed up and uh, pitch up. And if you go down, it's going to pitch down and slow down. If you click here and make it Time Machine Pro, all of these are somewhat similar algorithms, but Pro, the one which would take the most processing but do the best job, um, you'll see that in addition to tuning, you get a speed percentage. So at 100%, this is kind of how, how it is. I'm just going to play make sure that I have that selected. All right, if I go up from 100, let's say I go to 105-ish, you can see that the pitch sound stays the same but it sped up the sample, so that issue that I was having is even worse. There's more space between the end of the sample and the beginning of the next one. Let's go to 95-ish and see if that helps at all. All right, so I don't have any space in between the samples anymore, but I'm noticing that the, the kungas are still offbeat from the click track and it just feels um, almost a little rushed at this point. So I'm going to split the difference and go somewhere around 97 and see how that works. seemed to do a good job so it maintained the key it didn't pitch it and it was able to slow it down just slightly um, also what Time Machine Pro does is if you do choose to pitch down the tempo doesn't change so you can use different keys and still get a different pitch but the tempo will remain the same which is kind of cool too um, so if you need to get a sample to fit and you don't want to change its pitch, you can just play with the, time, uh, the speed knob in Time Machine Pro. And you can always tune a sample that's already, you know, you can make it fit time-wise and then tune it and probably get in between, um, you know, the half steps from uh, C to C sharp, for example. There you go. Time Machine Pro.